Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So, as you can see, some progress has been made, but I still have a long way to go before I get this place organized and in shape. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about vacuum hose fittings and, and adapting some hoses to the other. So, in the small wood shop, you will typically find three sizes of vacuum hose fittings. On some of the larger pieces of equipment, you'll have a 4 inch fitting. And then on your shop vacs and some of the smaller, more handheld devices, you'll find maybe a 2.5 inch fitting. And then on the really small items and the small shop vacs, you'll find an inch and a quarter fitting. So you get to a situation where maybe you need this to go into this, and obviously it's not going to work. So there's a couple of solutions to that problem that you could do. First solution is what I've traditionally done. I just get um, PVC fittings from the hardware store and I adapt them down to what they need to be. And the problem with that is that even though this is a four inch fitting, it really is up to the manufacturer of this particular fitting what four inches are they going to do. Are they doing four inches OD, four inches ID? And a lot of times four inches is just a suggestion and as you can see it's not a tight fit. And this is four inches ID so this is much bigger than that. So what you end up having to do a lot of times is for example this reducer did not fit into this cup or this elbow and so I had to wrap tape around the reducer to make it a tight fit and then I use foil tape to you know hold it all together I don't want to do that so if you don't want to do that there's other options this is called a univac coupler and it's made by fast cap and as you can see it has kind of like an iris motion like you would see in a camera Oops. so so maybe you start out like this and then if you need it smaller you just twist it and and then it will fit over any size fitting that you need it to fit to so I'll try to do this here on camera So. And since it's got like the rubbery diaphragm on the inside, it makes a nice tight seal. And it's adjustable. So I can go from that roughly two and a half inch fitting even all the way down to this one and a quarter fitting. So these are very nice. I'm not sponsored. However, these are also very expensive. Relatively speaking, I think maybe I paid eight or ten dollars for this and I bought this one for a very specific purpose because this end will fit on to a standard shop vac hose. The other end I'm going to put on to my uh, DeWalt planer right there because I always have problems with the hose slipping off. So if this is if this solution is too janky and this solution is too expensive. So there's a third solution that gives you all the benefits of having a custom fit between the two fittings and is dirt cheap once you make the initial investment and that's 3D printing and that's what I'm going to do today. Before I can build anything for this shop I need to get dust collection on my saw stop and my dust collector is not set up yet because I need to build stuff for it and so, in the meantime, I need to adapt my saw stop's 4 inch output port to one of these 2.5 inch shop vac ports. And what I'm going to do that with my 3D printer. And I'm going to show you how I make the measurements, and I'm going to show you how I design it in Fusion 360, and how I print it. And hopefully, this will be helpful for somebody out there. Okay, so I need to take a few simple measurements. And basically the design I'm going to make is a reducer fitting that goes over the saw stop port and then it reduces down to the shop vac port. And it's just like that. So let me measure the shop vac port first because that's the easiest one to get to. So... 
big switch here. Okay, so we're at, uh, let me actually, I'm actually gonna do millimeters because it's easier to do millimeters when I'm designing in Fusion 360 for 3D printing. So we're looking at 57.8 millimeters, and I'm gonna go ahead and make that 58 millimeters. And then for depth, I want maybe two or three inches, so let's call it, actually let's call it 40 millimeters. So not even, not even two inches. Okay, down here at the saw stop port, I'm gonna take the same types of measurements. First, that is a hundred millimeters, and then my depth will say is thirty millimeters. So here's my drawing, and then this third section is arbitrary. Right here, the actual reducing section, I can make that whatever I want. Since I don't want it to be too long. But I don't. I also don't want it to constrict too quickly because that could reduce the amount of suction I get. I'm going to go ahead and make this from there to there. I'm going to make that 40 millimeters also. So overall, I'm at what uh, about 110 millimeters. So that's just over four inches long. That should work out just fine. I'm fairly new to Fusion 360, so I'm going to speed through this process a little. First I want to print some test rings before I commit to printing the full adapter. My measurements could have been off by a little bit, and my 3D printer could also be off by a small amount, and that could lead to something called cumulative error. So I want a nice, tight friction fit, so I think printing some test samples will be the best way to achieve that. So right now, I'm simply sketching some concentric circles, and then I will extrude the profile to get the ring. Once my drawing is complete, I export it as an STL file. I open up Cura, and I drag and drop the STL file onto the build plate. I'm going for speed here, so I'm running the printer at 100 millimeters per second and 0.2 millimeter layer height. Once I have sliced my file, I drag and drop it onto my Octoprint server. I then use Octoprint to send the sliced file to my 3D printer. It ended up taking a couple of tries for each ring to get the perfect fit on both the 4 inch and the 2.5 inch ports. Once I verified a tight fit, I went back to Fusion 360 to design the actual adapter. This time, I sketched out a cross section of the adapter using the Y axis as my center point. Then I used the revolve command to extrude the cross section around the Y axis, producing the desired part. Once again, I export and slice the STL file and use Octoprint to send it to my 3D printer. The print ended up looking great. Let's see if it performs as well as it looks. All right, so here is the moment of truth. Well, I have to admit, this is kind of exciting. This is going to be my first cut on my new table saw. Wish me luck.
I'll call that a win. So there you have it. Nothing groundbreaking and I'm sure it's been done before, but I hope that this video has helped demonstrate how useful a 3D printer can be for a woodworker. Um, I can make custom fittings for every single machine in the shop. I'm probably going to be able to come up with a nice design for printing blast gates as well. And not to mention things like routing guides and getting perfect curves for things like armrests on chairs or even maybe um, inlay and, and things like that. So really the sky's the limit and, and or your only limit is your imagination. I want to thank you guys for sticking around with me and watching this video today. Um, if you like this type of content, go ahead and click down on that subscribe button below. And let me know in the comments below if you have used a 3D printer in your shop or what you would do if you had one of your own. So I hope this video inspires you to maybe try making your own adapters and things for your wood shop. All of the tools and materials that I used in this video are linked down in the description below. So if you're interested, you can go check that out. Once again, I want to say thank you for watching the video. I'll see you guys next time.